<laughs> Five minutes? Five, Five minutes. minutes, okay. Well, I just want to bring up, make a point to something that both of you all said that I want to stress for the audience. We've all talked about data and the importance of data. Um, but, and listening to you, Sarita, it reminded me of the need to stress the importance of disaggregated data. Absolutely. Um, in all of our work at IHEP, we tried to disaggregate data, but it wasn't until we started working with you all that when we looked at one population only mm -hmm. and did a deep dive that we were able to find out some really unique things about the Latino student population. And right now we're doing some work with the Asian American community doing similar types of studies about what's happening to Asian students because we have the idea that Asians don't have problems in higher education as this model minority myth. But actually when you disaggregate the data and look at it very differently, you find that for low income Asians from certain ethnic groups, they're, they're struggling. So I just would want to stress to the audience and those people who are in charge of folks at your institutions who do data analysis and work with data, it's very important to disaggregate data. You find out very interesting things about the populations and the subpopulations on your campus when you look at things specifically. Well, and, and uh, the pleasure and the enlightenment that Excelencia uh, derived from having a set of campuses that we were working with at the same time that they were involved with achieving the dream. Because one of the things that is very true about data collection is it's expensive. Um, it's not a casual enterprise. Uh, to be able to uh, look at trends, you have to not only have the apparatus, but then you also be, have to be able to sustain that over time. And so we uh, were so appreciative of the careful work of achieving the dream in not only instituting it, but helping campuses begin to look at it. Um, one of the things I would say about disaggregated data is that anyone who can look at whether it's gender, whether it's a particular ethnic and racial group, has the skills to look at all. And that the proposition that you will, just like I assume uh, parents with multiple children, at some point you look at each and you make sure they flourish as, and the family moves forward. So that the premise of not only the technical skills to be able to look at individuals, but then the kind of leadership proposition, which is how do you put it together so that you balance those priorities. That's another part of the, it's data gathering, but it's also data use, and data use is so critical. Surely. We, we believe that, um, that data is absolutely critical and disaggregating data is absolutely critical to understanding what, what one does in the classroom in order to improve um, the, the teaching and learning in the community colleges. And we believe that so deeply and so do all of the partners that have been involved. We, we actually send data coaches to the institutions that are achieving the dream institutions. And they spend several days working with leadership coaches who are also sent to the community colleges um, with data, a core, a core team, leadership team, and a core data team to determine how to build the capacity at, um, so that institutional research can take place in meaningful ways to uh, inform wise decision making going forward. There are three things that we know are really, really critical and we've, we've learned as a result of our work with several rounds of colleges now. The first is the data issue. We have to build the, inf the institutional research capacity to know what's going on. I mean, um, someone said once, um, without data, you're just another person um, with an opinion, with um, limited information, and that's <laughs> very true. The second we know is that you have to engage faculty, and you have to have sustained engagement of faculty and, and professional development, especially adjunct faculty. Many of you know, uh, but some of you may not, at least 70% on average of the faculty members who teach our developmental education courses are adjunct faculty. So engaging them is a huge challenge for the leadership in the community colleges, and it's a huge challenge for the entire sector. But that work needs to be done, and we are making that a very high priority. As a matter of fact, we've asked one of our partners, Public Agenda, to, um, to do focus groups and to write papers on these three items that I'm talking about. And the data capacity one will come out in mid-November. And I'd urge you to go to our website at www.achievingthedream.org to, to see the first two that we've done um, and uh, the third one that will be coming out in November. 
And the third um, most important consideration is scaling. Mm -hmm. um, it's really it, it, um, a very high priority for us to work with the institutions to try to determine how to take to scale what we know works and to figure out ways in which what works can be adapted in different institutions to take to scale. It's a huge challenge, but it's doable, as Sarita said. We know we can do it. It's a matter now of working together in concert and pulling together all of the good work that's been done um, and getting um, um, on the ground with you to make sure that we learn um, what work, works best in which environments and how well and with, with which students. I have one question um, that I'd like you to address, and that is, um, as outside organizations, um, and as a trustee, it's important for all of us as trustees to understand, um, and, I, and I certainly have heard it, that I'd like to succinctly put, what is the value that you bring to us? Michelle? Sure. So as I mentioned earlier, we are an organization located in Washington, D.C. Many of you are not in Washington, D.C., but one thing that we do is we look across the nation constantly and we want to know from you what is happening on your campuses for a variety of reasons. The first reason is we want to elevate the success stories on your campuses and we want to connect you to others that we've seen across the country who are doing important work in particular areas. So we see ourselves as a bridge in that regard. Secondly, we have information to share with you. We know what's happening on the federal scene. We keep an eye out on what's happening in various states. So we funnel that information to make sure that you stay informed and stay connected to the broader issues. When I first started my career, I worked on a campus. And one thing I know about working on a campus is that you get focused on what's happening on campus. And that's very important, but it's also good to make sure that you share your learnings with the larger community as well as gain new understandings from other people outside of your campus community so that the, the things you're doing stays fresh, stays innovative, exciting, and we see ourselves as a liaison or a bridge to making those types of connections for people at community colleges. It's also hard to be a prophet in your own land. And all of us have uh, on-ramps to policy. So in addition to everything that Michelle just said, and, and we all have our own ways of dealing with this, uh, to, the issue of going to scale is one where we want to take that common experience or the common challenges and bring it to the attention of policymakers. You can always do that, and you are people of influence. But what I think oftentimes seems to be very influential when it's a tough discussion is someone who literally doesn't have a dog in the fight. That it is not, we're not speaking for our own agenda. What we are is talking about a broader agenda where colleges and institutions play a critical role. That dynamic, I think, is fundamental to the change process. And it's one that I think all of our organizations play in slightly different ways. But it seems to be a particularly important one when national priorities are being set. Because if there's one thing that we do have, absolutely, is our firm belief that our academic institutions are critical for our future. And given the scenario that we have, um, the fact that in the coming year a lot of people are going to get distracted, uh, we're the ones who have to keep beating the drum that our students really are our commitment and our capacity to serve them well. Who's ever in the White House, who's ever in the State House, that's what we have in common. And with ATD, um, I, uh, we have those seven partners that I mentioned before, one of which, to pick up on the policy issue, is the Jobs for the Future. Mm -hmm. And they're working in 16 states throughout the country very intensively, and we have cross-state policy groups who are looking at policies that, that, that tend to be barriers or, or, or are barriers to institutional success in, in making changes. Um, so that policy work is, is a very high priority and will continue. Yesterday, and Tony Bright mentioned uh, that in the audience there were two individuals who come from another partnership organization, and that's the Community College Leadership Program and at the University of Texas in Austin. And Byron and Kay McClenney are 
two of our strongest and, and brightest and most able leaders among our founding partners, and they have led in the creation of trustee institutes, and they now have a partnership with ACCT um, where they are holding trustee institutes to help you as trustees better understand um, how you can be most helpful as leaders, not only in your institutions, but hopefully leaders uh, in, in our national reform movement going forward. So I urge you to think hard about working with them, um, ACCT, and, and with the Community College Leadership Program, because I, I can assure you, you'll find that, that time well spent with them um, will be extremely beneficial to your role and your accountabilities as, uh, as leaders in your, in your communities. Thank you very much. And I'd like you to please all join me um, for thanking them to take the time out today um, to help us understand some of the issues and the partnerships that they can bring forward to us as trustees. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd also like to thank all of you for joining us today, and we do look forward to seeing all of you this evening at our annual awards gala tonight at 7 p.m. Before we adjourn, I do want to remember and remind you to fill out the Congress evaluation forms. This year, you may also complete those evaluation forms at the Datatel Cyber Cafe. And one last reminder, if after hearing this session, you are not inspired to attend the diversity leadership meeting in November in a few weeks. I don't know what could inspire you to attend it. Um, we all need to go back to our campuses. After hearing these things, um, are you asking the question about inclusion and equity and success on your campuses? I promise if you go to this leadership on diversity, you will go back to your campuses with things you can initiate immediately, with information where you can start setting policy on your campus to make sure there's equity and inclusion for all of your students, especially as it relates to success. So one last plug for that. And now this session is adjourned. <laughs>